Hello guys! Welcome to another fun and learning adventure with me, Teacher Danny, as your teacher for today. And in this episode, we are in our summer costume because we will visit another important ecosystem, which is the Intertidal Zone. Would you like to know where it is? Now come and join me as we explore science! Ever heard of high tide or low tide? Now, what happens during high tides? And how about during low tide? And by the way, where do these tides occur? A tide is the rise and fall of the sea levels. You heard it right. It happens in the seas. Now. This is caused by the combined effects of the gravitational forces exerted by the sun and the moon and the rotation of our earth or planet. Now, if the extra ray is located at the end of the river stream before it meets the ocean, what about the intertidal zone? Correct! Intertidal zone is the area where the land meets the sea between high and low tide zones. Now, this area is converted with water at high tide and exposed to air during low tide. Usually, this is found in the sandy beaches along the rocky shorelines. Now, you might be confused of the spray zone, which is another ecosystem near the shore. Spray zones are often dry and is covered with water on extremely high tide. Wow. Yes, there are organisms such as lichens, the periwinkle snails, but the intertidal zone is different. Now, just like what I have mentioned, the intertidal zone lies between extremely high tide and low tide. And it is divided into subzones by our marine biologists. So let's watch this for more information about the intertidal zone. Marine biologists divide the intertidal zones into subzones based on beach location and how they are covered with water. The subzones are the following splash tidal zone, high tide zone, middle tide zone, and the low tide zone. The splash tidal zone is also known as the supra tidal zone. This area is covered with water only during storms and is dry most of the time. But it is repeatedly wetted by splashing waves and wind blown spray. Only few types of organisms can live here. Marine plants and animals that inhabit this place must tolerate salt, heat, cold, and extended dry periods. Some organisms that have adopted to this place are lichens, barnacles, periwinkles, algae, pompipods, and many more. The high tide zone is an environment with very high saline water. It is covered with water during peaks of high tides, but it can be out of water for a long period of time. There may be plentiful of water in this zone but not enough to support the big population of its vegetation. The anemones, acorn barnacles, mussels, sea stars, shore crabs, green algae, isopods, limpets, black turban snails, and some marine vegetation are the predominant organisms that survive in high tide zones. The middle tide zone is the most active region since it is covered at times uncovered with salt water twice a day from the tides. It is generally submerged except for a fairly short period during turn of the low tide. The temperatures become less extreme due to shorter direct exposure to the sun. 
more extreme wave actions occurs in this area than in the high tide and spray zones. There is more marine vegetation, especially seaweeds, in the middle tide zone. Organisms that survive in this area include lemonies, barnacles, ketones, crabs, green algae, isopods, limpets, mussels, sea palms, sea stars, snails, sponges, shrimp, krill, sea urchins, and zooplanktons. The low tide zone is also known as the subtidal zone. This zone is mostly submerged in water and it is exposed only for a long period of time during extremely low tide. This area has the most food and shelter. It has the most diverse organisms compared with other zones. In this zone, there is much more marine vegetation, especially the seaweeds. Organisms in this zone have less exposure to air and heat, but they are underwater most of the time. Some of the organisms in this area are anemones, brown seaweeds, crabs, green algae, keton, isopods, mussels, sea cucumber, sea lettuce, sea palms, sea stars, sea urchins, shrimp, snails, sponges, and tube worms. In this particular ecosystem, there is more energy and there is better coverage. Rough waves and shallow water protect the area from large predators. Now, if you are an animal living in this area, you might experience many challenges from the maintenance of moisture, the force brought by the waves or the rough waves, the salinity of the sea water, and of course, the zone here experienced extreme temperature. A lot of challenges living in this area if you're an animal or a plant. But as we all know, ecosystem is very important because this is where both living and non-living organisms interact and they live and grow in it. Now, how can we protect the intertidal zones? Intertidal zones are very important because humans harvest animals and plants from the intertidal zone for food, for home aquariums, and many more. Moreover, many shells, especially those of marine mollusks, are collected for souvenirs by some people who visit the ocean coast. There is also an impact to the intertidal zones when people explore tide pools and step on organisms and their habitat and sometimes even take creatures. This has resulted in a decrease of organisms in some areas. Pollution poses threat to tidal pool animals and plants. Coastal pollution includes discarded trash, sewage spills, and toxic chemical runoff. Increased development in coastal regions can also damage tide pools through the introduction of contaminants. Now, how are we going to protect the intertidal species? So, we need to protect and conserve the intertidal zone to protect diversities in intertidal communities. We should provide a source of water supply of breeding stock so useful areas can be sustained. Harvesting of intertidal species should be regulated and undertaken at a sustainable level. In the ecosystem, everything is connected to everything else and it is important to understand how a specific type of interaction can affect the entire ecosystem. What we do to one organism can affect another organism. That ecosystem might be the best place for our summer outing for today. And let's always remember to protect all the living organisms in our intertidal zones and let us not forget, of course, to subscribe, to like, and share all the things you have learned in this page. I have to go now. It's swimming time. Bye-bye.